Greetings and welcome to the podcast for Mom's Strange Magic. I'm your host and primary storyteller, Kim Upton. Join me as I discuss topics on just about any subject you can imagine while also telling you stories about my wild, wonderful, and weird life. Okay, so I'm going to work on that musical intro a little bit. Um, I think that it's... <laughs> Anyway, hello, happy Thursday. It's podcast day, you all. It is podcast day. So, um, hey, how are you doing? That's the first thing I want to check in on everyone and see how you are doing. And just make sure that everyone is, I don't know, just doing okay. So, anyway, um, yeah, I am... It is. It, I love that so far podcast day has been gloriously sunny and beautiful and I, I want to go outside but I need a I, I need a better microphone um this one is really good at even like kind of I think it's, it picks up my thoughts before I say them but when I listen back if I move in any manner it picks that up too so it's a really good mic um, but I need a mic that has like the whisper cover so that uh, you guys aren't hearing the nuances of my speech and when my teeth clack together and things like that. Um, so or when I move and it's like, hey, you're moving. So, yeah. Anyway. Hey. It's me. Your girl, Kim. The uh, Mom Strange Magic podcast storyteller person. And I... <laughs> There, I, I just, there's so much that I want to talk about today, and there's so many things that I want to share, and I have my notes set out, and I have all this, you know, I'm just like, I am on it, but when I sit down to do these podcasts, it's like the universe says, well, you know what you really probably need to talk about after you did all of that work? Um, is cats because the cats are going to I literally as soon as I get into my office space um, now one of my cats is trying to eat the microphone so this is whatever and um, I it, 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 this is something that I've sort of danced around I've made a few posts I don't know I tried to do something on TikTok but that place is I don't know it's simultaneously delightful and just maddening at the same time but you see all this I'm just going to go for it. Let's go for it. Um, Whiskey's here with me, the cat, not the drink. And she's always sort of my kind of trickster spirit embodied in four, four feet and a long tail. She, I mean, she's really out here trying to get, she wants to be a part of the podcast. Do you want to say something, Whiskey? <laughs> That was whiskey. She'd be saying things to you. That's her. She will not. I'm literally moving around the room right now so that she can't get me. So pardon me if it everything sounds weird. Cause, <coughs> oh, I choked myself up. Choked myself up. <coughs> okay. So anyway, I'm away from the cat. And uh, here we go. So it's a topic that I talk about often with... When I was doing business classes and trying to, you know, figure out how to take my kind of cornucopia buffet skills and put them into one place. Oh, y'all, now she started my computer. Come on. Come on, cat. What are you doing? No. Oh, my gosh. And, um, you know, a lot of these coaches and a lot of these programs are based <clears throat> in a... a kind of there's this formula right so have you ever gone to a website and it's like you have to scroll you're like okay well this sounds great and here's all these great um, shoot 
reviews and you know here's all these things and people are saying this is great this is wonderful and uh then you have to like scroll through 900 pages like here's bob f in oklahoma who says this is wonderful and here's Susie q in new york that here's i i i i dis- I deliberated on um, buying this program, but I'm so glad that I did. And, you know, here's the hard sell. And then it's like, here's how much this program would be worth if you were to buy it, not on special. And it's something like, you know, $4.2 million. But if you sign up today, you can get it for $29.95. If you're not sure about it, here's a free whatever. And so you can do the free whatever and you get in there and you start to find in these free things that they're all, these people are all reading off uh, to me the same cue card. Uh, You want to get more clients? You need to, and it's the phrase that I'm going to use here in a second. And then once you do, people will come to you and you will be famous and you will never smell bad your food will always taste good you will be the chosen among the chosen um you know just all of a sudden it will be um you know everything will be wonderful and you'll be great after you pay this 29.95 entrance fee to the <clears throat> whatever so yeah, I'll be, you know, I because I'm a sucker for a free thing. And, and, and by the way, this is part of that whole formulaic plan. And when you take these kind of online marketing classes, or even if you go through like a reputable business that you think they're all, it is the same thing. And we, as people that are self-employed or even like content creators or things like that. I'm not really a content creator, but I am self-employed. Um, they're like, here's how you do it. Do it exactly like I did. And we all get used to those, you know, four or five really good scrolls on the web page. And here are all these people that <laughs> look, I'm sorry, they look like AI generated humans. And you just see their their head and, you know, here's this person's wonderful statement about how uh, just, it, it, and then you get down and here's, the, you know, like, I'm okay, I'm like, well, I, I was already interested in it because it sounded fascinating to me. So yeah, sign me up. And then, you know, here's, here's what this would really cost you. This is what it would cost you if you did this. And you're like, okay, that's cool. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> what was that? Okay, that's sure. And here's a bargain. And if you pay right now, if you pay $800 right now, you'll have the lifetime whatever, yada, yada, yada. No. <laughs> like, I can tell you from years of one in in my myriad <laughs> college degree program tracks business management was one of them and business and I, I can tell you that in business there is nothing that says to do that right so in business it tells you to make a plan uh, set your goals. Um, you know, there's there's a lot to that. I'm not going to go into it because I'm not that. That's not what this is about. <clears throat> but you you learn about things like entrepreneurship and how to check your name and how to do this and and how long it really truly takes to establish and start a business. You don't have an idea and then just go out and all of a sudden get on social media and become a millionaire. Although that's how it seems. When you get on social media, right, that someone decided they wanted to sell cat toys. And so uh, they they use this program and now you can sign up for a monthly subscription box for cat toys. And the phrase that you hear in every one of these workshops, and it is even filtered into some of the classes that I have that I take my credentialing classes, like if I want to learn about formularies and herbalism, or if I want to uh, gather, you know, more more credentialing and trauma-informed care, if I want to learn more about the blend of spirituality and science, this is just for an example, I will hear this phrase and it raises my, it just, it just, it, it invokes very strong feelings into my person. And this is what it is. 
find your niche. Like, what, what does that even mean? That sounds like we're about to circle back and pivot the synergy to formulate a plan that will whatever, yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> now, in business, do we talk about finding your audience and finding, making a path and all of that in college? Yes, we did. The word niche was never used. I never once heard niche. Although I did go uh, to college when the dinosaurs free roamed the earth. So I don't know, maybe that word wasn't implemented into the jargon of business at that point. But I see this now. It is so prolific in everything. Humans, Rumi says, this being human is a guest house. Each day, a new feeling. Each we you, you you are a niche. You as a human being, you're the niche. I my niche is Kim. That's my niche. Um, I don't need to find myself because I know where I am. And <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm being a little sassy right now. But, and, you know, just, we contain multitudes. This is not something, uh, hold on, before I find myself highly frustrated. We are not black and white individuals. And when we start trying to put things in boxes, we take away the beautiful intricacies of being a, a human. And did, is it good to find a focus? Sure. Is it good to find a goal or make a pattern or have a consistent rhythm or present or whatever? Absolutely. All those things are important. But a niche, this is like, I don't know, it sounds like I would like to try some niche, please. Um, and, you know, the more that I heard it, the more that I heard it, I just, it, it, it made me feel a little cuckoo crazy. Um, I, no disrespect to, I mean, I, that's, that's a phrase I use, so please understand that I mean no disrespect to anybody that has mental health problems. And the fact that I have to say these things right now, um, to uh, is in the same genre as the niche. So we are, we cannot be who we are. That doesn't mean you can go out and just be a grade A jerk. Like that, that I cannot abide that. Like being a jerk is not cool. But w let's say you have a business selling cookies, right? So your business is cookie making. Do you, you know, there is this uh, cookie here that I followed on Instagram a long time ago. And her specialty was she made cookies that were covers of albums. So like if you were a big fan of like the Beatles, she would make cookies that looked like their albums and then would have other cookies that had cartoon, you know, characters of the, uh, had uh, band members or whatever symbols that you knew with that band. And I thought that, th <clears throat> I thought those were amazing. And I can remember someone said, a, a, like, a, I think it was a comment to a live or something. I don't remember, a real, I don't remember where the comment was, but it said, you are a very niche cookier. And I just kind of remember the reply, which was, I'm a what? Like, she was like, what? What do you mean? She's like, I make cookies and I specialize in these cookies and in this type of cookies, but I make all kinds of cookies. And so, you know, this kind of group of people had niched her into a corner where they didn't see all the other wonderful cookies that she made and the other wonderful designs. Um, they, they niched her into doing this. And after like two or three months, because people would only call her for, for these and she would say, okay, Hey, I'm, I'm booked up. I can't, 
whatever and just the the people would well you shouldn't have been so you know you shouldn't have you should have expanded you should have hired and she's like look i just whatever and so you know what's the moral of that story i don't know it was a good story though <clears throat> um after that i was like f the niche man like f the niche uh, because that was one of the things and these classes that, you know, like, well, so I see here uh, in your pre-interview for this class, uh, Kim, that you do all these other things, but what is your niche? My niche is that I make things and I help people. Yes, but what are you doing? What is your niche? And I'm like, oh, you mean, what is my hook, right? What is my hook? How do I get, how do I hook people and to get my business. And I'm thinking, I mean, my hook is that I am a bad Bama Jamma. And I have spent 30 years <laughs> doing this professionally. And I keep getting more and more credentials because I do not think that the credentials that I have are enough or something will change in that which I study or I'll become more enriched by experiences that I have with other people. And I don't want to go around and say, you know, I'm a wise woman. I'm a spiritual director. I'm a well-known photographer and artist. Um, you know, like, I don't want to do that. I'm like, I'm Kim. I give you a buffet of things. I make art and I help people. <clears throat> I make things and I help people. That's my hook. But, but you know, but, but, but was your niche? Are you an herbalist? Yeah. Do you do energy healing? Do you under? Yes. <laughs> do you offer, um, you know, coaching? Although I'm, I'm really soft pedaling the coaching right now because I. I was in the coaching genre long before everyone else was also a coaching person and uh, no shade to all the life coaches out there because there are a lot of really good ones. Um, but I just do not, it's great to have as a backup, but it, when that first started coming into the larger lexicon of wellness there were actual like hours that you had to get and uh, continuing education units so like for example spiritual directors are not necessarily it's not necessarily credentialed but it goes along with ministerial things so if you're a minister you can take classes that allow you to have um, you know like psychological first aid diversity working with those that have addictions and things because you know as a spiritual director as well as a minister you are not allowed to diagnose or prescribe so I'm not there to give anyone any kind of medication <clears throat> now if I were to <clears throat> excuse me be like a psychiatric nurse or something then absolutely definitely I would want to have um, you know that that would be a niche thing to do uh, career rise but anyway so then the, the I, I slipped into professional voice there sorry it, it happens to the best of us so you yeah, know was like well what would your client expect when they came to see you and so I would say, well, whatever, we're going to do an intake. I'm going to have, a, you know, if they're a new client, we're going to have 30 minutes of time where I'm going to kind of explain what the intake is about, what they can expect from me, what is it they need? Are they looking for a more spiritual kind of thing? Are they looking for pragmatic information? Are they looking for advocacy? Is this something that is a spiritual thing a mental thing or a physical thing or is it all three what does you know do they have a understanding of holistic or integrative or multifaceted wellness do they know you know i'm i'm going to sit and kind of you know listen to them first <clears throat> and say you know what brought you here and then i'll say okay well here's here's what I can offer this is what I do and I just was like I might as well have just said and then I shaved all my hair and I became a Hare Krishna and handed out flowers at the library 
because these people were like, but how do you, how do you hook your client? How do you get them in? And I say, if someone comes to me and they are not comfortable with me, they don't have to stay. That is why a new client intake, a new client meeting involves 30 minutes of just discussion. It can be on the phone. It can be whatever. I want them to come and feel comfortable with me. That is something that you you don't see that. You don't get to try before you buy. If you go to a new church, you have to sit through the whole thing. If you go, you know, and then immediately, like, well, do you want to become a member of our church? You're like, no, dude, I just I came here for the 30-minute uh, pre-show. If you go to a physician, a lot of people don't know, you can actually call and say, I would like to interview this physician in your office. Is it going to happen where you're going to be able to do that? Not always. Um, the, it, it, it's very difficult to get that to happen. But if you have a tenacious person, such as myself or other advocates, you can kind of figure out a way to, to get that interview. And that's the same with a therapist, right? Or for your mental wellness. You you need to go in there and, and assess the situation and see if this is going to be a good fit. That doesn't, we don't get to do that. That's, in, which is just wild to me. But in, in my line of work and others that, you know, people that do this multifaceted work, we are very keen most of us, I'm not going to blanket everybody, but one of the tenets of why we went into this work is because we could have a certain amount of informal dialogue and that we could listen within a whatever. So our, we don't have a niche. Our, this is not a niche. And long ago, we would have been the village healer or the village wise person that's just so if just to say it it just sounds weird but that that there was someone like that in every community there used to be someone that did that work like that was their you know that's who they were they might be the weaver and the wise woman they might be i don't know the the fish hunter and the you know the, the village dream analysis or I don't ana analysis <sighs> analyst um, the, we are not uni humans we contain multitudes and so yeah and in, in, in the last part of this let's talk about how just F the niche you which is, let's ah it's just so frustrating let's say you really like cotton t-shirts just because you like cotton t-shirts doesn't mean that that's your niche now let me add a little bit of psychology into this so with the brain it can it absorbs all kinds of information and it loves patterns when we meet new people our brain says we need to understand this pattern we need to understand what this person is like what they're doing who they are and kind of what they represent that is not a niche and so when you are and i'm trying to find the language for this because i have a tendency to when I activate that, <laughs> when I ac activate the academic aspects of my brain, I start saying, well, and Dr. So-and-so's dissertation on the tribal intergenerational healers of XYZ country or whatever, um, I tend to, you know, I can just your eyes will glaze over you will get into a meditative state and you will you will listen to this part of the podcast when you you're like oh i need to sleep i want to hear kim telling me about the xyz tribe <laughs> and how <laughs> and their intergenerational healing of whatever anyway so 
in the in the bigger picture of this, let me just use this as an example. When I was a kid and I went to the doctor, they were the primary care provider. Now, let's say I had a, for example, if this happened, uh, my foot was run over in kindergarten. They were my primary care provider. They knew everything, you know, like med school was hard. And they didn't have computers and they didn't have Palm Pilots or, you know, cell phones or whatever access to. They had to kind of sit and memorize everything. Um, now, in some of the classes, you, you're, they're like, this is what you need to know. And here's how you can get the information on the fly, which is great. I love it. I love seeing um, wellness providers that are willing to stop a minute and kind of research. That I think is awesome. But that that physician knew you from the time you were small to the time you, you know, if you were a pediatrician, I think. Um, they, I think, I don't remember what age, because I think at that time we'd stop seeing that pediatrician. But anyway, they wrote things down on a paper chart um, and sat and talked to you. How are you feeling? How are you doing? What's going on? They knew what medications you were allergic to. If my chart went down, it didn't matter. These people knew you. They knew you. And... If you had a weird test, they sent you to the, like a test result or something. So, for example, I had to go um, to, I forget. Oh, my gosh. I can't remember that part. Um, I think I was, <laughs> was still traumatized by having my foot ran over. Not once, but twice. The lady backed over it, and then when she heard me screaming, she pulled forward. So, good times. Um, like, I feel like I just went to the hospital. I And I followed up with my primary care. Um, again, you know, I was five years old, but that is a pretty strong memory in my um, old cerebellum there. So... Yeah, but I can remember, like, I'd get strep throat a lot, um, you know, dun, 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 foreshadowing to understanding the health issues that I started having <laughs> as an older person, but I digress. So, yeah, but it was, it was so, it was centralized. You knew what was going on. And then came niche health care, Right. So here's the deal. Here's how this works. This is, and, and this is not a criticism because I'm not being critical. I'm just telling you that this is how it works. You go into your primary care provider once a year for your checkup, let's say, and you're like, I'm having a little bit of sinus drainage. I think I'm going into menopause and uh, I'm starting to notice um some discomfort in my hip. These are just random things. And they're like, okay, well, we're going to send you to the ear, nose, and throat people for your runny nose. We're going to send you to uh, orthopedics for your hip. And uh, you need to talk to your, um, I don't know, your OBGYN, whatever. For <laughs> I forgot the other one. I should have wrote it down. I should have been like keeping notes as I go. Anyway, so you you that's that's what you do. You you go to a specialized niche person for your ear, nose, throat. So um, whatever. That? Let's 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 do something else. Um, dry skin. So they're going to send you to a dermatologist, an otolaryngologist. And an orthopedic specialist. Okay, so you're gonna you go to the otolaryngologist, and they're like, mm, I think it's just a little bit of allergy. So let's go ahead and get you scheduled for an allergy test. And you're like, okay, great. But I also noticed while you were here that your heart rate was a little high. So let's go ahead and get you in cardiology. And at this point, you're like, okay, so now I have allergies and heart failure. Like, no, no, we just want to make sure that this, you know, that we don't miss anything. 
And so, you know, you're like, okay, you get that scheduled. Then you go to the dermatologist and they're like, okay, so you're getting older and older people have drier skin. So here's a good way to, you know, make sure you're getting enough water, make sure that you're not dehydrated. In fact, let's just go ahead and send you to a uh, gastroenterologist to make sure that there's not something going on in your system where you're not having a problem absorbing. So, you know, you, you started off with three Right. And oh, by the way, the first, you know, you're going to you're going to get from the otolaryngologist, the ENT person, they're going to want you to come back in six months. And you're like, OK, cool. And then you're going to the derma, the, you know, dermatologist um, is going to want you to come back in six months. So you've got now you've got five providers. Right. So you've got an allergist. You've got um, the. That should, that should be remedy. You've got, oh my gosh, just go back and listen. So instead of like just three, now you've got five, but you haven't gone to the last one yet, right? So you haven't gone to the orthopedic person. Um, and so they're like, mm, you know what? So it, I let's get an x-ray of this and I can see some crosshairs and you might have a labral tear. So I'm going to, I'm what I'm going to need you to do is go to physical therapy. And also uh, I'm going to call in our dietitian because you probably need to lose weight. And then there's a free yoga class, and blah, blah. So you had a runny nose, dry skin, and hip pain. Your physician could have easily said, okay, so let's run some tests to see if you have any inflammation. How long have you had this runny nose? How old are you? Hold on. Sorry, I had to cough. I didn't want to cough in your ear. Um, you know, just some basic care, just some basic, just, you know, but they can't because they, they've, they've only been given 10 minutes. They've only been given 10 minutes to give you this care. And their goal is to send you to a niche provider. And then that niche provider sends you to another niche provider. And so then when you go back to your primary care provider with your binder full of information, they have not even looked at it. And then, and then they're like, well, what did they tell you? And you're like, I, I mean, I, I've been to all these different doctors in the last seven months. And that's being kind. Right now, I think like the average wait for a specialty doc is like, I don't know, four to six months. Um, and that's, I'm saying average. I'm not saying usual. I'm saying average. Um I I know people that are in a wait to get into the queue for appointments. So they're at an eight month wait just to get into the queue to make appointments, to have an appointment. I digress. So we've niched healthcare and nobody's getting better. In fact, people are more and more people are talking about how unsatisfied they are with the, their health care. But what can they do about it? Pro tip, you can do a lot about it. Um, and so we've niched health care to death. And we've taken the, the beauty of what made people become want to become a physician in the first place away and now they're just basically another here's the cats come they can tell <laughs> like here's another cat it's tootsie she's like oh she's preaching Kim, uh, the the preaching preaching is happening but uh, so you know and and we see this in and just not just that but like in education and no longer is it good to have a well-rounded view from an educational standpoint no when you're four you have to pick your career and then when you get into school you get to track into that career never mind that you might actually want to be an artist or maybe you want to do mechanics but nope when you were four you decided that you really liked space and astronauts so you are now in the, <laughs> the astrophysicist physicist track and you cannot get out of it and you have to stay in that and but did the astrophysicist <laughs> that discipline 
contains multitudes. You need to know a lot of history. You need to know science. I mean, honestly, you need to know art. You need to know about music. You need to know about vibration and frequency and optics and things like that. So why not get a well-rounded education? Why not get some kind of like minor degree and say like, journalism or something you know like why do you have to start at four and become this person I see this a lot in kids in, in high school now who you know as soon as they hit ninth grade they're the counselor is the guidance counselor is like okay well what what track do you want to be in and I mean like I don't know when I was in high school I wanted to be in the rock and roll track but whatever um I was like, I want to be in the Shenan track, and then I want to, I want to make sure that I can Shenan again. So uh, I'm just saying, I might have taken a brief reprieve from high school because I was just like, oh my gosh, I cannot. Why are we discussing Lord of the Flies? This is just whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, why? And it's and it's like that in spirituality. You, oh, you. So that was the cat. <laughs> oh, hopefully I can edit that out. That was painful. Um, clearly that's a sign from the universe to shut my pie hole. Um, Keep, stop my mouth from moving in the podcast um actually she got tangled up so i feel kind of bad for her but we could also see this as a sign for the universe so let me wrap this up shall we um but here on mom's strange magic podcast we work to make sure that everything is authentic and you understand that life happens and and this is all as it should be um but it's that way in spirituality, too. We get told, again, from an early age, that this is the only way that you can believe. This is the only way that the divine can show up. This is the only way it's whatever. So this is how you can believe. And if you say, well, but over here in this passage, it says, oh, no, 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 no. That's not, you're, don't, read the, don't, don't read the entire book and try to understand it. I'll interpret it for you. And, uh, you know, and this doesn't happen just in the Abrahamic faiths. We see this in other faith systems, too. And, they, you know, they want a niche faith. And it, this is like, and, and it, this happens in, in everything, right? In holistic and integrative, like holistic people that, you know, oh, don't ever go to a doctor. They're bad. No, not all of them are, you know. Or people that like crystals or tarot. Oh, those are all evil. Not really. I mean, hello, in the Bible, there's a whole lot of stuff about dreams and prophecies and, you know, people throughout history would cast. I mean, anyway, anyway, I digress. <laughs> Just keeping it real out here in the world. Um, hopefully none of you were scarred too bad from the f from <laughs> from that difficult time i'm gonna try to see if i can edit it out i'm just it's just you know sometimes i think i fix something in editing and then i don't so i gotta get better at that anyway f the niche f the niche f the niche f the niche you do not have to be one-sided you do not need to be you do not need to have a hook you do not need to be someone that is just like everyone else just just be who you are um and f the niche and with that friends this podcast has come to an end and i want i would love for you to visit my patreon I'm working on that and uh i'm always working on something always on that uh, tootsie what are you trying to shenan again? Do you want to come be on the podcast? Whiskey was on the podcast. No. She says no pictures, please. <laughs> anyway, so upcoming 
on YouTube, The Kimbo Burley Tales. That is happening in April. Uh, check out the Patreon, momstrangemagic.com. You can find me at Kim E. Upton or K.E. Upton either way because I had a problem with my <laughs> domain setup. So just let me tell you right now, preferably I would not want to have to do all that <laughs> to like say, come see me. I just want a sign out in my yard that says a very odd, weird lady lives here, but she makes things <laughs> and she helps people. <laughs> and then they they would come people would come um but it's 2024 and we all gotta have our niche so my niche my niche is the no anyway um thank you for listening thank you for oh my gosh thank you to everyone who has somehow found me on social media even though i'm like i'm staying i'm going i'm staying i'm going um it has persevered through my growth cycle this year uh the beginning of this year well, just in the past, since coming back to this, the, you know, thanks for just walking with me as I have found my sea legs and as I still continue to kind of figure out what the space is going to look like. And as I'm just unapologetically standing in <laughs> my realness going, F the niche and just presenting, I'm, I'm presenting as I want to present, which is wild, wonderful and multitudinous so yeah thank you again 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 have a great rest of your week and i'll see you next week